Gospels Baltimore. Welcome to today's service. Let us begin to lift our voices and begin to worship our God. Let us begin to thank God for yet another day, another Sunday. Let us thank God for waking us up this morning. Let us lift our voices and begin to say thank you, Jesus. Let's say something beautiful to our God this morning. Lord, we bless and we magnify you, O God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for keeping us, O God, through the week. Church, let us at this time begin to humble ourselves and begin to ask God for mercy and for forgiveness. If there's anything we have done throughout the course of this week or even this morning that would hinder our praise and our worship from being acceptable unto God, let us begin to lift our voices and say, Heavenly Father, have mercy upon me. Lord God Almighty, forgive me. If there's anything we have said or done, let us ask for the mercy of God this morning. Let us pray that our coming into his presence this morning will not be in vain. That we will come and our expectations shall be met this morning. For no one comes into the presence of God and leaves the same way. So let us pray that the Lord God Almighty will transform our lives. Will do something beautiful in our lives this morning. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray that for everyone else who is on their way, let us pray that God will bring them here safely. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, we just say thank you. We thank you, Almighty God, for your love, for your mercy. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Father, Lord God Almighty, we are here before you. We commit today's service into your hands, Almighty God. We ask, Almighty Father, that you will take preeminence. We ask, Almighty God, that your name will be glorified in today's service. That none of us will leave here the same way we have come. We ask, oh God, for everyone who will be standing up on this pulpit to minister in one form or the other. We ask, Almighty God, that you would speak through them, oh God. That we ask, Almighty God, that we all will be blessed this morning in the name of Jesus. We invite the presence of God. We invite the Holy Spirit into our midst that the Holy Spirit would come in and take control. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. True worship. Good morning. Good morning. It's time to give God praise this morning. Hallelujah.
Let's give him praise. Let's give him worship this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. The name of Jesus is higher than any other name. The name of Jesus is greater.
morning. He is indeed a great God. Go ahead and continue to exalt the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Welcome him into our midst this morning. He is a good God. He's the way maker. He's the one that says yes and no one can say no. He's our Alpha. He's our Omega. He's the soon and coming King this morning. Exalt the name of the Lord. Bless him because there is none like unto him. He's the Alpha. He's Omega. He's the one that says yes and no one says no this morning. Exalt the name of the Lord. Bless him because there is none like unto him. He has kept you and I till this day. The Lord God Almighty is a faithful God. Exalt him this morning. Bless him because there is none like him. He is indeed a good God. He is the one that says yes and no one can say no. He opens the door and no man can shut this morning. Exalt the name of the Lord. Love on God this morning because he is a good God. Father, Lord God Almighty, we exalt you. You are the God who was, you are the God who is. You are the one that says yes and no one can say no. You are the king of all kings, you are the father of all fatherless. Father, Lord God Almighty, we exalt you this morning. We bless you because you are indeed a good God. You have kept us, oh God. Father, you have shown us mercy. Jehovah, Lord, we exalt you. Father, we say welcome into our midst this morning. You are an awesome God. Father, we bless you. Jehovah, we exalt you. There is none like unto you. Father, we don't take it for granted, oh God. Jehovah, we welcome you this morning. Take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and worshiped. Amen. Good morning, church, and welcome to church this morning. Let us just give the Lord a clap. This morning, he is a faithful God. Praise the Lord. This morning, we're, um, so, I'm sorry, good morning. Welcome to those online and to everyone here. I say welcome to church today. We're going to take three quick prayer points. We're going to pray for the word. We're going to pray for the vessel that God has set aside this morning to be a blessing to you and I. And we're also going to pray for JHB Charlotte. Exodus 4 verse 12 says, so go, I will be with you when you speak, and I will give you the words to say. This morning we're going to pray that the word that you and I will receive will do what we, it needs to do in our lives in the name of Jesus. When we hear that word, it will direct our path in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray that the Lord God Almighty will send you and I a word this morning. A word that we need, that when we hear it, we know that we need to go. We know that we need to do what it tells us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that as the word is released to you and I this morning, it will instruct us in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, oh Lord God Almighty, that your word, oh Lord, it will handle everything that concerns us in the mighty name of Jesus. Just that word, oh God, it will do us well in the mighty name of Jesus. The word, oh Lord God Almighty, that we will hear today will not fall to the ground. It will go forth and do what it set out to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you in advance for the word, oh God, because we know that that word will do us well in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. The second prayer point we're going to um, call upon God this morning for is for the child of God that God has set aside to be a blessing to us. So pray that as she speaks this morning, she will not speak of herself. She will speak through the grace of God upon her life. Go ahead and begin to lift her up into the presence of God. Ask that the Lord God Almighty will anoint her tongue afresh. Her tongue will be like that of a ready writer. Her words will not fall to the ground. She will be clear. She will be concise in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit your daughter into your hands this morning. We ask that, Father, you will speak through her. Lord God Almighty, the words she will speak, oh God, will not go back in the the same way it has come in the mighty name of Jesus. She will speak with boldness. She will speak with clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, she stepped, we ask, oh Lord, that she steps aside, oh Lord, and you take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, God Almighty, her words, oh God, will go out and do what it is set out to do in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. 
And last but not least, we're going to pray for JHB Charlotte this morning. We're going to commit them into the hands of God that as they gather this morning, the Lord will gather with them in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray that the Lord God Almighty will be in their midst. They will not um, fail. They will not fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, you will send helpers, oh Lord, from the north, from the east, from the west, from the south, in the mighty name of Jesus. They will grow in numbers, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. The words, oh Lord God Almighty, from that place, Lord God Almighty, will do them well in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the pastor and everyone, oh Lord, that is working there. We ask that, Father, you will strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus. You will help them, oh God. You will hold their hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just want to say thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Eternal King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we just want to say thank you. For another opportunity, oh God, to be in your presence this morning, Jehovah, we say thank you. Lord God Almighty, as we go further into the service, we ask, oh Lord, that you continue, continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh Lord, for the word, oh God, that the word we will hear today, Lord God Almighty, will do us well in the mighty name of Jesus. It will go forth and accomplish that which it is set out to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And for your daughter, oh God, we ask that, Father, you will give her strength in the mighty name of Jesus. She will speak with clarity. She will speak with um, she will be concise in the mighty name of Jesus. Her words will not fall to the ground in the mighty name of Jesus. And for all of us oh God, we ask that Father as we hear the word, the word will do well for us in the mighty name of Jesus. For the rest of the activities of this service we ask that Lord you will take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because we have prayed in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Good morning church. You may please be seated. Let's yeah, let's celebrate the King of Kings. Come on. Hallelujah. You may please be seated as we listen to JHB News. Good morning, JHB family. My name is Timmy Tokbe Adepocho. I am here to share my press report. I want to thank God for adding another year to my years this month. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Secondly, I shared in June how I was laid off in February of 2023. And um, it's been God. I am grateful to everyone that has been holding my hands and supporting me in every way. I pray that when you are faced with challenges of life, you will not do life alone in Jesus' name. I am here to share that I got job offers back to back and I was faced with a very good situation of which one to pick and where to go. I am happy to share that I accept a job offer and I am thankful for everything God has brought my way, for growing me, for keeping me, for sustaining me, for being God alone in my life. I want to use the opportunity to encourage everyone that is going through any form of challenges. I want you to know that God is more than able and he will see you through. I also want to use the opportunity to thank my spiritual parents, Pastor Tola, Pastor Kufo. Thank you so much for your love, for your support, for prayers, for all that you do for us. I pray the Lord will continue to increase you on every side in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone, and have a blessed week ahead. Watching what you put into your body and how much activity you engage yourself in determines how your body functions. Positive physical health habits can help reduce your stress level, lower your risk of disease, and boost your energy. Here are a few strategies for improving your physical health. Get active. Maintain your muscle. Maintain a healthy weight. Eat a healthy diet. Mind your metabolism. Build healthy habits. You can benefit from even a little activity at a time. Every minute counts when it comes to movement. Every step counts when it comes to your wellness. Take charge of your weight and health. It is who or what you follow that you become. When we look at your life or whoever you are following, if you don't like what you are seeing, it's time for you to follow somebody else. Real transformation gives you an idea. 
of what you are going to become. It gives us an idea of what the experience is going to be like when the transformation truly occurs. True transformation starts from the mind. I want you to know that transformation is an inside job, but it manifests on the outside. As a man thinketh in his heart, the scripture says so is he. Every transformation will challenge your mindset. If you are going to go from where you used to be to where you want and what God wants you to be, your mindset will be challenged. And you cannot be rigid about this because a rigid mind cannot be open to transformation. I discovered something recently about life and leadership. Most of us want to drive nice and expensive cars, but the big problem is we don't want to pay the price for it. When we see great leaders doing exploits and phenomenal things, it's because these people have decided to pay the price. And this is why I am inviting you to this conference being held by Jesus House Baltimore, where we're talking about the burden of leadership. Yes, there is a burden you know, behind leadership. Most of us see you know, the, the great part of leadership, what it looks like is you know, concerning leadership exploits and leadership assignments. But wherever you see great leaders, they pay a price behind. And at this conference, I'm going to be speaking about overcoming the burden of leadership. Very important. You don't want to miss it because it's going to be practical. I'll talk about the skills, the tools, and the resources that are required to ensure that you overcome the burden of leadership and you move from disease to ease in your leadership. Join me and my phenomenal host, Pastor Tola Odutola, at this virtual Great Leadership Conference holding on the 22nd and the 23rd of September, 2023. If you want to be a great leader, you don't want to miss this. JHB is 26. Let's celebrate God's faithfulness as JHB turns 26, September, 2023. Our two-day celebration starts on Saturday, September 2nd, the Empowerment Day, with a breakfast at 10 a.m. This is a ticketed event and tickets are limited. Please register on Church Center app for your tickets. And our anniversary celebration service is on September 3rd at 10 a.m. Ministering is Pastor Femi Atoyebi. Venue is JHB Campus, 7710 Windsor Mill Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21244. Dates again are September 2nd and September 3rd for more information, please connect with us on www.jesushousebaltimore.org or call us at 410-521-4783. Oh, magnify the Lord with us and let us exalt his name together. Psalms 34 verse 3. Good morning, JHB. It's your girl, Tammy, and this is JHB Revealed. So stay tuned for the following announcements. For all of our first time guests worshiping with us online or in person, we welcome you and we're so excited for you to be in our presence. Jesus House Baltimore is a community of many nations and tribes challenging people to maximize their God-given potential. So please listen out for a call that we made on your behalf during the service. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Yeah, we be tweeting. JHB's 26th anniversary celebration kicks off with Empowerment Day on Saturday, September 2nd, right here on JHB's campus. Ministering will be Pastor Femi Atoyebi and other keynote speakers. Registration is now officially open and the celebration continues the following Sunday, September 3rd. Hey, see you there. <laughs> 
For all of our workers, the next in-house workers meeting will take place Sunday, September 3rd with Pastor Tola at 9 a.m. The membership department would like to invite all new members to complete the ongoing membership training, which will conclude on Saturday, September 2nd. For all interested members, kindly fill out the registration form located on the church website or kindly send an email to the address shown on the screen. All men are required to stay behind briefly right after the service. The gathering would like to invite all men to a panel discussion on mental health and spiritual development, and this will take place Saturday, August 26th at 10 a.m. in the Emerge Sanctuary. Ministering will be Pastor Jide Adebule and Pastor Kayode Atolaye. Royal Kids Day will take place Sunday, August 27th at 10 a.m. The theme this year is Follow Jesus. The Fruitful Vine Ministry would like to present an hour of encounter on Tuesday, August 29th at 9 p.m. online. This is for those who are believing God for the fruit of the womb or standing in gap for someone. Life Group continues this Thursday at 7 p.m. at our various Life Group centers. This Thursday is a potluck theme Life Group, so don't be that person that only brings juice. Don't forget to bring something. All books donated will be given to the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club, so kindly drop off all books at the Glory Center. The next Oana registration is now open and will close on August 31st. For those interested, kindly register through the Church Center app. The Believers in Baptismal class will host their next baptismal service on September 16th right here on JHB's campus. For those interested, kindly register through the Church Center app or send an email to the address shown on the screen. The Jules Annual Conference theme, Addition by Subtraction, will take place Friday, October 13th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, October 14th at 10 a.m. respectfully. Registration opens September 1st and registration is free, but you must register via the Church Center app. JHP presents Relationship Matters, an interactive session hosted by Pastor Tala and Pastor Kofo. This event will take place right here on JHP campus on Friday, October 20th at 7 p.m. So sign up today and kindly note that childcare is free. If you missed any of these announcements, kindly visit our church website to watch again. It's a wrap from JHV Studios. It's your girl, Tammy Alasimbo. Stay blessed, stay safe, and peace out! <laughs> Let's appreciate them once more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many people you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? I don't think it's a full representation of the people here. And I know you didn't come to be a spectator. You came to be a participant. So if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, whether you are in-house or you are online, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, that's the way to do it. Amen. You may be seated. The, the Bible says, I think it was a psalmist who said, as the deer panteth for the water brooks, so my soul pants after you, O oh God. My soul pants for the living God. He said, when shall I come and appear before his presence? Because I know that when I appear before the presence of the Lord, I will never go back empty. That will be your testimony today in Jesus' name. Whether you are in-house or you are online, you will not go out empty. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Um, I have a few announcements. Yeah, you know the drill. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Can we please appreciate true worship? Thank you for this morning's worship as well. God bless you. All right. So a few announcements just to reiterate what we've heard um, on JHB Revealed. Uh, first of all, Cameron and Ian Haynes had a baby boy on Friday, August 18th. These are the children of Dickin Lanry and Sister Wumia Labi. 
Yes, yes. It's the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. For those of us who know them, please call them, reach out to them, celebrate with them. Let's rejoice with those who rejoice. And our own day of rejoicing is coming soon too. God bless you. JHB is 26. 26. The, I believe the people who are not clapping or rejoicing are our guests. We want you to rejoice with us also, our guests, if that's you online or that's you in-house. Because the Lord has been mighty good to us. Amen. And our celebration starts with an empowerment day on Saturday, September 2nd. We're going to be having Pastor Femi Atoyebi and other keynote speakers. That day is an empowerment day. We're talking about building generational wealth. You don't want to miss it. I don't know if the registration is still open or if it is closed. If you know, let me know. But if just in case it still has one more seat, you might not want to miss it. Take advantage of that. You can do so through our church center app um, on online. Amen. Uh, we get faith by hearing the word of God. But we get propelled or provoked to achieve our destiny. We get propelled to action by attending a conference like Great Leadership Conference. Whatever it is we don't do will never ever come to pass, even though God is God. So I want to appeal to us as this conference is coming up, please do not miss it. Don't choose one day or the other. Come and receive what you need to become who God has called you to be. There is still destiny inside of you and potential to be fulfilled. And believe me, none of us have fulfilled our potential. None of us. We're on the way. We're progressing. But sometimes along the way, we have to be reminded. We have to be energized. Sometimes we have to be re-energized. Please, whichever category you fall into, don't miss the Great Leadership Conference. You've heard many speakers from near and far talking about they being there. Those speakers have impacted generations. Please don't let us be starving bakers, giving for the world to eat and missing out. That will not be your testimony in Jesus' name. All men are encouraged to please stay behind for a brief meeting after today's service. Also, there is um, an open baby shower event for all pregnant mothers and moms to be in the house after service today in the next room. So please avail yourself of that. You deserve to be celebrated. Can we please appreciate mothers? Woo! And fathers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have live groups uh, this Thursday, August 24th. And this live, particular live group at all centers is going to be a love fist or a potluck. Um, so please make sure to invite friends, invite family, invite co-workers, invite people who are in your neighborhood to be part of this. Um, you can... Also, join a live group center by going to the church center app if you don't belong to one. Please join a live group center today. Uh, don't be left out. Don't stand alone. Amen. Um, there will be an in-person workers meeting on Sunday, September 6th at 9 a.m. Sunday, September 6th at 9 a.m. So please mark your calendars. Uh, that's also the celebration Sunday for our church anniversary. Amen. And lastly, registration for the next Awana session is now open and it closes on Thursday, August 31st. So please register for your child via the Church Center app. God bless you. Amen. As I was sitting there, a song came to my mind and I started singing it. And I know it's for somebody. It's a song of prophecy. And I want us to sing it together because it very well might be for you. I received it when God gave it to me. And I want us to prophesy it out loud just before we go into the word this morning. Lord, you have the final word, the final word. I don't know who it is for, but I know you're in here. I received it, but I don't believe it's for me alone. Your word. Come on. It's God's word settled in your life. He's the ultimate. Do you trust him? Because it's not a worship song. It's a song of conviction. And you are in here and you know that you need God to do something in your life. And you need him to settle a particular issue. I did not sing that song anytime before this morning in that chair. 
and it came to my heart and I know like I know that it is for somebody. So I don't want you to please let choir lead you to worship. I want you to take hold of that word like that woman took hold of Jesus' garment and she was made whole. Sing the word with conviction this morning. Lord, you have. God, you have. The final word. The final word. The final word. The final word. In my life. You are the one who has no beginning and no end. You are the one who can change everything, yet nobody can change you. You are the God who says it and means it, and the God who means it and says it. You are the one whose word will never return unto him void. Therefore, Lord God Almighty, our hopes, our trust is pegged in you. And we know you have the final word. Who will speak when the Lord has not spoken? Lord, let your purpose prevail and let your plan stand for each of our lives in-house and online today. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout a louder amen. Put your hands together. God bless you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Good morning again, church. Since the beginning of the month, we understand um, that no matter what the challenges we may face in life, God is all we need to overcome. So we've been on the God is enough or God is all we need series. And last Sunday was part two. And we learned that God is the thirst quencher. Who quenches our thirst and meets each of us at the point of our need. Amen. Amen. Today, we're going to continue with part three of the series, and it's going to take us back to our scripture text, which is John chapter four, the book of John chapter four. And we're going to be reading this time from verses 27 through 36. I'll be reading the New Living Translation version, John 4, 27 to 36, NLT. Are we there? Are we there now? Yeah, because it's on the screen. Are we going to be a, a, a participative church today? I really wish we would be because I feel very, very strongly that God has a word for you. Whether you believe it or not, some people will get it and they will go home with it. Yeah? It's a challenging word though. Are you prepared though? Is God our father? Can he speak to us? If he speaks, will you listen? Truthfully. Let's go then. John four twenty seven to 36. The Bible says just then his disciples came back. This is talking about Jesus' disciples. And don't forget the backdrop of it is that Jesus needed to go to Galilee after he had done miracle signs and wonders and he was going to Galilee and the Bible says he needed to pass through Samaria. And so he came to a well at a place called Sychar and he stopped at that well. And while he was at that well, a woman came to fetch some water and he engaged the woman in conversation and asked the woman if she would give him water to drink. And the Bible says the woman started to interrogate him and say, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. How come you want water from me? And then Jesus said, if you only knew who it is that is asking you for water, you will not only ask him for water, you will ask him for living water. And that water that he's going to give to you will ensure that you thirst no more. While he was speaking to the disciples, the Bible then said in verse 27, which is where we're starting, he said, just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. 
But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? But they were thinking it. That's what I think. They were thinking it, but they didn't have the nerve to ask. The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, let's say what she, she told everybody, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Hmm. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, listen to this explanation. My nourishment, that is what satisfies me, what fulfills me, what meets my desire, comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, somebody say, I say, wake up. Come on, say it with gusto. And look, let's say it together. But I say, wake up and look around. Can you help me tell your neighbor? what we just said. No, no, it's not wake up and look around. It says, but I say, wake up and look around. Can you really look around? Look, no, seriously. Church, let's look around. All right. I'm glad you looked around because we'll get to it. He said, the fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages. <laughs> and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? It tells you the person who plants. It's not necessarily the person who harvests, right? He says, you know, you know the saying, one plants and another harvests. And it's true. This is Jesus still speaking. He said, I sent you, Gumi Banjo. I sent you, David. I sent you Mark, Bola, Debo. I sent you Chukuma. I sent you Nkechi. I sent you. Put your name there. I sent you. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work. I came and did the work, said Jesus. John the Baptist came and did the work. Isaiah came and did the work. Nehemiah came and did the work. Hosea came and did the work. Micah, they came and did the work. Moses came and did the work. Guess what? Your father in the faith, Abraham, they came and did the work. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already, had already done the work. And now you will get to gather the harvest of the work that some of them didn't even experience, the harvest of the work they did. But you will come and gather the harvest. I hope you will still be shouting when we get to the core of this message. Because one thing I have discovered is that God and worshiping God is not just about me. But it's also, <laughs> it's actually about God. There's a song when I went to do my A-levels. There's something that used to be called A-levels in Nigeria. In a school called Baptist Academy. And there was a song, we joined, I joined the choir and... and they taught us, God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. God is working his purpose out and the time is drawing near. Nearer, nearer draws the time, the time that shall surely be when the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. I discovered that Romans 8.28 was not talking about me. And we're still reading this passage. That all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And as he called according to whose purpose? And so I am here thinking I'm running after being who God has called me to be. But the only reason God wants to make me who he's called me to be is so that I can fulfill who? 
his purpose. There is a kingdom agenda. And each of us are so cogent, so key to that kingdom agenda, you will not believe it. And so while you're running and thinking you're running after your purpose, God said, I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. So listen, verse 39. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him. They begged him. They were like, how on earth could you know the details about this woman's life? There is something unique, something different about you. There is something that we've never experienced before. There is something we want to know. Perhaps you tell me about me too. Perhaps you help me solve this situation. Perhaps you help me look into my child's life. Perhaps you'll be able to help me get out of this trouble, this quagmire that I am in. Please stay in our village. So he stayed two days. Long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe. Somebody say, now we believe. Not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. We have experienced this God ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. Lord, give me words to speak. Let me speak as your oracle. Anoint the lips of clay that the words that fall out of it, oh God, will fall on fertile ground. Oh Lord God, no stony ground is permitted in this house in the name of Jesus. The cares of life will not choke out this word, oh God. Thank you, Father, for we'll not only be hearers but doers of your work in the name of Jesus. And so I'm speaking today on God is all a dying world needs. God is what? Let's say it out together. I want full participation if you don't mind. One more time. God is all a dying world needs. It doesn't take a lot to see that the world we live in is in a crisis mode right now. Because everything that can be shaken is being shaken. It doesn't matter what continent in the world you reside in. It looks to me like the world needs a spiritual CPR. I came across an article online sometime two weeks ago. It says the top 10 crises the world can't ignore in 2023. And in my mind, I thought top 10. (laughs) Certainly more than 10 at the top. Because a few things that were on my mind was not even on this list. And I thought they were paramount. But right now, the world is going through an economic crisis. How many people, you know, inflation, you know inflation. We live in Goshen. We are children of God. So it will not take us out in the name of Jesus. But you do know there's an economic crisis, right? There's food and cost of living crisis, right? There's energy crisis. You know how hot it's been. There's climate crisis. (laughs) There's wars and displacement crisis right now. Many countries are at war where people are displaced in the millions. Political crises exist. Guess what? Identity crisis exists. Social crisis exists. <laughs> Moral crisis exists. Gender crisis exists. There's so much going on. All sorts of unthinkable, unimaginable things. Decadence that's happening on this terrestrial ball called Earth. Are you listening? I want us to listen because today is just mostly a teaching and it's an admonition. Amen. Amen. I came across a video on, um, I won't mention the social media platform, but perhaps you two came across this video and it was of an elderly woman. And I decided to check it out. I thought it was a video filled with wisdom, but maybe it was filled with wisdom. And she was standing and knocking on the door of her neighbor's house. And she knocked on the door and the neighbor opened the door. And she said she has a complaint about her neighbor, the person who opened the door. And she said, I have a complaint about you and your spouse. And I noticed you have a toddler daughter. And every time you are taking her to the bus, you are always wearing pink for her. Why? I first of all thought, sometimes old age, dementia, stuff, you know, because she was really old. 
So I was trying to see where is this going. She said, I believe you shouldn't be choosing pink all the time. You have to let her choose who she wants to be. She has a choice on what color she wants to wear. Because she can choose whoever it is she wants to be. Because wearing pink for her, you are presupposing that she wants to be a girl. That's one. And then again on social media, I found another video. I wasn't looking for it. It just came. You know, it comes. <laughs> and there was this girl, and I thought it was actually crazy. It was a crazy notion to me. Not to talk of the fact that, the thing that it's a fact, right? Um, she said she's suing her parents. And the reason she's suing her parents is because they didn't ask her permission to bring her into the world. Okay. And I heard that it's a thing now. That children are cutting out parents because they said they failed them by bringing them into the earth without their permission. Yes. Now, people want the law to be able to sleep with animals. And in some countries, it's been written in the law. It is in the world we live in. We're in serious crisis. But I love it. Because how can the light shine except when there's deep darkness? The only time that you begin to see in the dark is when light gets introduced into the darkness. And so our relevance as light, what does God call us? The light of the world and the salt of the earth. Our relevance is now more pronounced if we really know that we're relevant. Yes, beloved. So back to our text. Just after Jesus told the Samaritan woman about her life, the, the disciples came back. And they were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them, of course, had the nerve to ask, what do you want from her, with her, or why are you talking to her? The Bible says they were shocked. Why? You just expressed shock yourself. When you said, ah, when I said these things that are a reality. Their surprise reflected the prejudice of their hearts. Jesus was a rabbi. And according to some Jewish thinkers, rabbis should not be wasting their time to teach or even talk to a woman. So we can say that the woman represented something despicable, like the world we just talked about. And it looks to me like they didn't understand the assignment. I don't think they understood the assignment. This was Jesus who had gone all over the place, healing those who were oppressed, delivering those who were in bondage. The same Jesus who was tired from doing miracles and came to the well at Samaria, at, through Samaria at the, to the well at Sychar to meet with this woman. How can you not understand that he did not come for the people who were clean? How can you not understand that he went to the man by the pool of Bethesda who was there with the lame, the blind, the sick, the everybody who had left everybody who was, who had one issue or the other. Jesus went to them, went to this man where they were and said, will thou be made whole? And Jesus had said in another scripture in the book of Luke, he said, at the people who are not sick, do they need a physician? If the world is indeed sick, isn't it time for the physician to come and minister to the world? If the world is really in crisis, isn't it time for the nurses who are the assistants of the physician to arise and begin to do something and bring the bedpan and attend to the sick? Should a nurse come into your room, heaven forbid if you are in the hospital, and what they are asking you is, how on earth did you get in this situation? It must be something you did. When I heard what you did, I knew it, that you didn't deserve to actually be alive. But that is what we do as believers. God saved us. However, by the time we come into the house of the Lord and we get grounded as disciples, we forget. Let me go and I think I'm rushing ahead of myself. 
And so two major, th three major, two major things happen in the discourse and so on. But I want to bring out three players. The woman. The Bible says in John 4, 28 to 30, he said the woman who had been through a barrage of, you and I know, of circumstances, and finally got a respite through her encounter with Jesus, left her water jar beside the well and ran to the village. Many of us, if not most of us, when we first received Christ, we left everything that we've known. Some of us left the relationships we were in. Some of us left the environment we were in. And we ran with gospel, with excitement, with conviction to Jesus. We knew something had to change in our lives. And we had now gotten that encounter with him. And we knew if we followed him, our lives would never be the same. And so we ran with excitement into the house of the Lord. Nobody needed to tell us, please go to church. Nobody had to talk us out of watching online. We ran into the house of the Lord. We knew that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The issues, the long-standing curses, the long-standing uh, terrorization of the enemy was coming to an end. We could smell it. We could feel it. With that conviction and that excitement, this woman had just seen a man who was different from the six men that she had engaged with. Each of the six men and six encounters had led to failure. But when Jesus Christ came, he gave her hope. And she wanted to transmit the hope. You know, hope can be transmitted. When you meet somebody and they come to you and they say, you know what? I was in this situation yesterday. But when they introduced her to me, she came and took me like a sister and she tended me. Let me introduce you to her because her heart is open. She loves, she's a people person. She loves to help people. And then that immediately she ran into the village and started to tell those people with excitement. But you know, now when we come to church, because that time has passed and it's been a long time, we no longer come with excitement. We don't even come to God with excitement anymore. They have to beg us to praise him, you know, whine us to worship him and things like that. I'm not talking to you alone. I'm talking to myself as well. Because as, unless if there is no breath in my lungs, will I say that, oh, I am not totally guilty of some things. But I've just come today to remind us that you and I have a holy calling. And if God saved us, there is a purpose for which he saved us. Because the God that we serve is not a useless businessman. He's interested in profit. He doesn't waste anything. And so he made an investment in you and I by giving us his spirit. To do what? And when he was living, he said, greater works than what I have done shall you do. Because I go to my father. Because in the days of Jesus, there wasn't 8 billion people on the surface of the earth. But now there is. So pretty much what he's saying is that you have more opportunities. I have more opportunities. To do what? Is it just to look good, to drive a great car, to live in a big house. He said, if you leave everything for me, you will get those things too. But seek ye first. Sila, pause and calmly think about that. Is he first? The woman went and said, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? All she did was plant a seed. It was a question, sir. Could it possibly be the Messiah? Now, you be the judge. Come and see him for yourself. All we have to do is compel them. That's what Jesus said. Go to the highways and the byways and compel them to come. Then there was another player. The disciples. This is you and I. John 4, 31 to 38. The Bible says, meanwhile, are we tracking? Are we here? You know, Jesus had a meeting one time and the people started walking out. They said this word is a hard word. And he asked his disciples, he said, will you also go? They said, where shall we go? Because you have the words of life. You know, I'd really like it if I came to a church that all they're telling me is not just about what I'm going to get, what I'm going to get. Because if I read this Bible, that's not, what, that's not all that's in there. He said, I'll get everything. But if I, there's always a condition. 
Remember, God is not a useless businessman. He's a profitable person. He loves profit. The disciples said in verse 32 to 38, but Jesus replied, uh, sorry, meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. They were like, please, whatever you are saying to that woman was not quite important. You are hungry. They cared so much about him feeding his physical body than about feeding his vision. And Jesus was not. He said, man shall not live by what? Bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And if God said, I want those guys, that's going to be what I'm going to do. That's me fulfilling the will of the Father. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. He had to reintroduce himself to them. That, hey guys, you didn't quite understand the assignment. Do we understand the assignment? When we leave here today, we're going to meet people along the way as we've been meeting them. But there's a way that we can get so wrapped up in ourselves as the disciples and what we're going to eat that we totally forget that the lives of these people are perishing. Difficult enough that we don't wind down to give the homeless guy along the road something. Bad enough. Sometimes I'm telling myself, oh, he should have come further before the light changed. <laughs> And sometimes I'm like, you know, I could really have stayed there and not go until he comes and let people wait. Yeah, because this man needs to eat. And they're coming in their cars. At least they had money to buy gas. So they definitely have money to buy food. I can't keep on going on talking. I want everything I'm saying to sink in because this is how God gave me. And please let me give it to you like that. The third major player was Jesus. John 4, 32 to 38. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Is that still your nourishment? Or is it just about you? Is this still my nourishment or have I gotten distracted? Somebody said distraction. You never know that you're distracted until you're actually distracted. It's inside distraction that you know, oh, I'm distracted. <laughs> it's after it has happened. Because all that we've ever been thinking about now, I know we want to make it. In fact, this is God's will. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He wants it for us. But he's saying, don't forget me. There is a purpose for which, I, what you're running after, I don't know what analogy to use, but you're running after a cup of water. I want an ocean. You will drink as many times as you want from my ocean. But please, don't ever forget, I want an ocean. I want an ocean. Jesus said, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. We're saying Jesus is not going to come anytime soon. After all, they've been saying that. He came 2,000 years ago. <laughs> four months until harvest. That's what we've been saying. We still have time. I still have time. Tomorrow, I'm going to minister to that, my friend, at work. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk to the people in my family. Tomorrow, I'm going to do this. Tomorrow, I'm going to get my life together and really, really be a Christian. Tomorrow, I'm going to do But tomorrow never comes. Because sufficient for the day is the evil therein. Believe me, what's going to happen tomorrow is already waiting for you today. So today then becomes the day to make the choice. The day to make the decision. Which way do I want to continue going? Yes, I pray. But how much of that prayer is really about somebody else but me? Yes. So don't tell me, oh, I pray. I, I really love God. So I pray. So I fast. How much of that fast is for God and not me? Yes, I go to church. How much of the word that I hear and the faith that builds up from hearing the word of God is for God? Out of faith, Paul got shipwrecked for God, thrown into prison for God. <laughs> 
beaten by a snake at Malta for God. Beaten with a catch of nine tails for God. But everything I've done till date has been for me, myself, and I. He said, I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. To me, this encounter was actually orchestrated by heaven. To bring our attention. We thought it was for the Samaritan woman. But she represented the world. Somebody nobody wants to touch with a long pole. This encounter is a heavenly orchestration for you and I. 2,000 plus years. I don't even know. That thing must be 3,000 now. Because it's been a long time. People have been saying 2,000 years Jesus came. At least 3,000. If not 4,000 even. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know. But, but really. It is to bring our attention to the fact that the harvest is here. That everything you see. Somebody identifying as this transgender pan. I heard another one last two weeks. Pan transgender or something. I'm like, really? So anything you can just conjure up now, you just conjure it up and say, that's me. May that not be our testimony or the testimony of our loved ones. But guess what? All I'm saying today is, that's the harvest. That person is the harvest. Yes. Don't say, mm, I don't want anything to do with them. Oh my God. There was a woman caught in adultery that her sentence was to be death. And Jesus ensured that nobody touched her because she was his harvest. Mary Magdalene was possessed. You know those people who roll around that you're doing like this when you're in church for? Possessed. She followed Jesus to the cross. Salome, go and ask all these women and all these men. They didn't come clean. He saw them as the harvest. My question is, what is the outlook and the perception that we have? How are we looking at them? Are we looking at them like people we don't want to talk? Because now we're sedidi, you know, we're, we're washed by the precious blood of Jesus and we're whole. But how about them? I'm going to move fast and I'm going to cut many things that I have to say here. And I'm going to go straight. I, 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 had, I had so many things, but I want to go straight to this this. Um, area. Why believers don't evangelize? Why believers don't evangelize? Number one, lack of a sense of urgency. Lack of a sense of what? Come on, let everybody say, I can't even hear any man. Lack of a sense of what? Thank you, sirs. We believe we still have some time before Jesus returns. And so we tend to procrastinate prioritizing soul winning. Even, do you know how bad it is? If you want to know how bad it is, check in your family. Don't go outside. I'm not talking about the, those people saying those things. I'm talking about, is everybody saved in your family? So you say you love them. You will send them money and everything if they need it. How about sending them Jesus? For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You love them so much that you will go to heaven and they'll head to hell? You may not be deep, like we always say, you know, the pastors are deep, the reverends are deep, the bishops are deep. No, all God wants is a Christian, a follower of Jesus. They'll go to hell like that and then you'll go to their burial and you start saying jazz. Oh, sorry about that. How good they were when you and I know they didn't receive Christ. Those are the things we do. That's the question I have for myself. So you go to that person's funeral and then they'll say, oh, because you are their cousin, you are their relative or whatever, come and say something. And then you say something. What do you have to say? You should have said something when they were alive. Please say something. It may not look like what you said meant anything because you will not be there on the day they really need Jesus and remember your voice reverberating in their ears. And they will say, Shadi told me something. They may not call you. They may go on their knees in their room and receive Christ. You may never know about it. But you have become an harvester. Somebody say amen. amen. Acts 
Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children <laughs> and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 18.8, the Bible says, And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household. That's it on the screen. Please put it back on the screen. Thank you. Acts 18.8. Let's read it together. Then, put your name there, Bumi, a pastor in Jesus' house, Baltimore, believed on the Lord with all her household. That will be our testimony in the name of Jesus. I don't want any member of my family to burn in fire. This thing is still real. We may not say it often enough because we don't want to scare ourselves, but it is real. It is the scripture. It is the word of God. And the word of God, if it does nothing, it comes to pass. And please, don't, don't start coming. Somebody came up to me one time and said, can we have a service of songs and so on? And I said, uh-uh. Was your grandma who you want to have a service of songs? Well, first of all, we don't do service of songs for grandparents, right? But we do for parents. Was she not a Muslim? She said yes. She said she was hoping that maybe well, if we did something, it will now. I said, it was a lost opportunity. You should have preached Jesus to her. What guilt you are feeling now? What regret you are feeling now? At least it won't be on you. Amen? Can you believe it? If we come to church and we're sleeping, we don't do what God tells us to do. And then after everything happens, we now, we can't blame God because God already spoke. This is what I told myself. Is there anybody left in my family and I'm saying, I'm a pastor. Of what good is that to God? I don't reckon on the day I arrive at heaven that they're going to say, Pastor B. Ain't nobody going to say that. They're just going to call you, Bumi. And then they're going to show you everything you did and the opportunities you refused to take. Instead of fighting ourselves within the church, can we go out there and fight the devil on behalf of the souls that reside out there and bring them in? You have the sickle, get in the harvest. I had the sickle, but me get in the harvest. Lack of a sense of urgency. That's why the rich man and Lazarus story in the Bible, I believe, um, I don't know, book of Luke. And the rich man was telling God, let Lazarus quickly go and tell my family that there's hellfire. I'm here now, so I know. And God said, if they don't listen to the people on earth, I sent Moses to them. I sent others to them. If they don't listen, this is where they'll end up. In fact, nobody can cross between here and there. So forget it. Whether you, Lazarus, anybody. You ain't going nowhere. He said, ha! You can imagine how he did. Had I known, would not be our portion. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Andrew called Peter. We know Peter now as the major pillar. Jesus said to him, thou art Peter, Petra, rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell would not prevail against her. That Peter was called by his brother Andrew. Andrew did not do the work that Peter did. But it will be written against the name of Peter till forever that he won that soul for Christ. Who in your family did you win to Christ? And if you won one, how about two? How about three? Are there only three people in your family? There are still yet a harvest. Amen? Amen. Number two, forgetfulness of our own former situation. Forgetfulness. Ephesians 2.13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you, me, who once was far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. But now you have be, been united with Christ Jesus. He said, remember, once you were far away from God, you too. But now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. He said in 1 Peter 2.10, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
if God has shown us mercy. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful. For they shall do what? They shall do what? Obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful. The same mercy that we received. The Bible says, comfort others with the same comfort you too have received. What other comfort can we receive more than the knowledge of Christ? Knowing that we are his and he is ours. That we are his righteousness. Our righteousness comes from him. And now before God, we've been made right through the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that good news? Why would you call your sibling only to just gossip the entire time? And you know they're in that situation. You forget where you two are coming from. And you never witness to them. Not to talk of the people who are at work. Why don't we evangelize? Another one I want to quickly mention is fear or embarrassment. Fear or embarrassment. Romans 1.16. This is Paul speaking to the church in, in Rome. He said, for I am not ashamed. Can somebody look at your neighbor and say it? And if you are ashamed, let them know too. Say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone. Wait, does everyone include that person who's transgender? Does everyone include that person who is a hater? Does everyone include that person who murdered? Do you know that many of these people exist in the Bible and they're the fathers of faith that we're talking about today? Do you know that David murdered? Do you know that Paul was a full-time murderer? He murdered, including he murdered Stephen. At least he gave the go-ahead to kill a child of God. Yet God called him. That person you've given up on may very well be the ones that will bring your children to Christ. Paul ended up writing 66 two-thirds of the Bible. But even the disciples gave up on him. When he came, they were like, hmm? Hmm. Suspect. I don't really believe his own salvation. He wasn't there with us. Isn't that what we do? When people come, to church, especially when they come as they are. And that's all Jesus wants. It's human beings who don't want us to come as we are. We look and say, hmm, who knows where he's coming from? They were in the club last night. But they came today. It means they're still looking for something. It means there's still an opportunity. It means you and I can do something. Because I see that thing as an excuse for us not to do anything. Because we help God write them off. And so later on, when you now see them and God has cleaned them up through somebody else, you now start saying, eh? hallelujah, hallelujah. That person's name was supposed to be written by yours in heaven. That was supposed to be your convert. Somebody else, because you wouldn't and I wouldn't stand up, God used another person. He said, if you don't praise me, I'll raise up stones to praise me. That analogy is just to say, if you don't give me what is due, what I've asked you to do. Because he said, let everything that had breath, has breath praise the Lord. So if you don't give me what's due to me, I'll go through another way. But the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Take that. It just might not be through you. That will not be our testimony in Jesus' house, Baltimore. The reason that scripture that says, look around, and we all looked around. I want you to just look back. Look towards the back. Towards your back. Are all these seats full? Can you imagine this being heaven? As I close, because I'm not going to go forward. Did we get this message? Imagine this is heaven. And you get there. And you see those seats. And you meet with God. And he says, here is what I'm going to tell you. Um, the seat you see over there, that was supposed to be for your first child. This seat you see here, you know your aunt who you called a witch? You never witnessed to her? That was supposed to be her seat. 
over there, right beside you, remember the day you heard the message when Ibanja preached? There was an empty seat beside you. Your husband was supposed to be sitting there. All of them are in hell now. How would you feel? Then he'll show you the one that belonged to your co-worker. And he said, all I need you to do is to speak to them about me. I have so much in this message, but I know that the Holy Spirit has already preached what I didn't preach. But I've come today to say God is all a dying world needs. But the only way they're going to do, get it or get through to God through Jesus is when we preach Jesus to them. He said, how shall they hear except they get some preaching? How shall they preach except they be sent? And remember the scripture that said, I sent you. All in this book of John. I sent you. We talk about the great commission, the great commission. What is the great commission? Go into the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of men. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But many of us, the last thing that I want to say, the reason why we don't evangelize is we say evangelism is for evangelists. I am not a pastor. I am not an evangelist. I'm just an ordinary church member. Ah! You are the child of the living God. He brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. The apple of God's eye. And you relegate everything to a title, a position, an anointing to do a particular thing within the general thing that is called everybody. And you discountenance yourself out of the kingdom agenda. We look for everything to do but win souls. As we rise today to our feet, you guys know I have the anointing of a preacher, but I do teach. And so in short, what I'm trying to say is this, we could have been shouting in this message because I could shout and you will shout with me. But I want the Spirit of God to shout inside your heart this morning. I want the voice of God to be louder than any human voice. I want you to think about what you thought you were coming to receive in the house of the Lord today. And I want to let you know and submit to you and announce to you today that what you have received is better than gold. The Bible says that he who wins souls, Proverbs 11.30, is wise. The Bible says he who wins souls will get a reward. God said he's coming with his reward. He's coming with his reward. He is coming with his reward. Everybody will get a reward for the work that they did. God does not want any mambi pambi Christians. He wants an army. He wants soldiers who will fight for other people's lives like it's theirs. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you love yourself enough to be a believer, how come nobody even knows where you worship? If you love yourself enough to receive Jesus Christ, how come nobody knows you belong to him? Because when you're in the party, you behave like, you know, they say when you're in Rome, you act like Romans. So you socially drink so nobody knows. You use that to cover. When they're talking trash, you talk it with them because you want to be politically correct. It's about you and it's about me. <laughs> you know, God told me to do something eons ago. I refused to do it. I didn't do it. I gave every excuse in the book. I had many excuses to give. Until God told me during Peniel, I ran out from the chair where I was sitting over there. And I went to start it. The day I started it, I didn't think anything happened. The next day, somebody approached me and said, 
that thing that you did, God laid it upon my heart to help you to do it. And the thing in the past two weeks has doubled in quantity. And so I knew I heard God. But it didn't help getting me to think. All the other things I've been disobedient in, what am I missing out by not obeying? Jesus said, if you love me, one of your proof of my love, of your love for me, is that you obey my commandments. And so when we come to church and we expect always to be wound, we don't mind winding you. True worship does not mind. Pastor does not mind. All the ministers don't mind. Because many times we need encouragement. This church, our vision is to challenge people to maximize their God-given potential. But there's a potential that if you don't take care, you will miss is a potential to be a soul winner. On the day you show up in heaven, because the Bible says heaven rejoices at one soul being one. When you come and everybody that your life was tantamount to shows up behind you, I would want the courts of heaven to say Bumi has arrived. And the angels stand and clap. And the wings of the cherubims come together. And then I hear those words, well done. Thou good, good, you're good, good girl, good guy, and faithful. I committed a little thing into your hands. You multiplied it. I'm proud of you. Now enter into your mansion. Because I'm about to remind him that Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for me. And he says there are mansions. And then they put the crown on my head. Just I've always imagined how Esther wore the crown. A child of God who wore the crown. A crown of righteousness that God has as a reward for his own. I want us to uh, close our eyes. You don't have to bow down your head. All I want you to do is focus on yourself actually. And think about where you're coming from. None of us was born from the womb, born again. In fact, the real definition of born again means, aside from the natural birth, we had a spiritual birth. And understanding that Jesus Christ came and died for us. And a reception of him into our hearts as our Lord and Savior. I want you to begin to think about where he's brought you from. And I want you to begin to imagine the number of people he can bring from the Mary Clay in your family, in your workplace, in your neighborhood that you know. Take them out of the dunghill and set them to sit with princes. Meaning at the right side of, of God where Jesus is sitting. I want you to imagine them there. If it is in your nuclear family, imagine them there. If it is in your extended family, imagine them there. If it's in your workplace, imagine them. Just imagine them. Just imagine them. And now I want you to pray from your heart. And I want you to mention names. Um, If you need God's help, you've got to be specific. Maybe you've spoken to some before and they didn't listen. Maybe you have a wayward child who doesn't even want to know God. Maybe you have a wayward brother, sister. Andrew called Peter. Peter was unstable for a while. But this same unstable Peter became the rock that the church is built upon. I want you to begin to speak to God. To enable you to be a conduit. To win their soul. So that on the day of judgment, you will not be asked the question, what did you do? What did you do? I want you to really do it. You know them. You know them. The only reason that you wouldn't do that now is maybe you yourself don't know Christ, whether you're online or in-house. Sorry, I know my time is up. I am sorry. But please do this. It's easy to come to church every Sunday and come and get what's mine. 
and come and get what's mine, Lord, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry that what breaks your heart does not break my heart. I'm sorry that only what breaks my heart breaks my heart. I'm sorry that that person, oh God, died without me witnessing to them. I had the opportunity. Even if it was one visit that I paid them, Lord, it was an opportunity. I thought they would have more time. But they don't. They didn't. Lord, help me. Come on and mention their names. Mention their names. The Lord's ears are not too dull to hear, nor his arms ever too short to say, Father, help me. Father, help me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands and my feet. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Touch my heart and speak through me. If you can use Lift up your hands and sing that song one more time as a sign of surrender. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. You can use. want this to be a season of repentance. If you know maybe you are doing everything that you can do and there's nothing that God can use you for anymore all around you, then it's okay not to lift up your hands. I'm fine. This is not about me. It's really about Jesus Christ and what he's called you to do. And I want us to repent together and say, Father, we have strayed from the main point of our salvation. Forgive us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to have you on our minds as our number one priority. To love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help me to share the good news of your gospel. And draw men and women to your kingdom on my behalf. As for me, O oh God, wash me in your blood. Anything that the enemy can find in me that will water down your effectiveness in my life, remove it from me. Make me whole again. Thank you, my Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together. You may be seated in the presence of God. If you didn't give your life to Christ yet, whether you're in-house or online, you don't have to stand, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is speak. The Bible says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But with your heart, you have to believe. There is a heaven and there is a hell. You know, hell is just a place where there is crying and gnashing of teeth, meaning regret of a decision that was not made. I want you to know you can make that decision today. And so I pray for you. And I want you to say with your mouth, Father, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. 
Jesus Christ, lead me from now on and I will follow. There's going to be a new convert card on the screen for you who are online. I want you to scan it. If you are in-house, please see one of our ushers if you want to say anything to them. But I want you to know that as you've said that today, God has heard you and you are born again. But please stick in church so that you can be rooted and grounded. Amen. If you don't have a church and you're watching, find a Bible-believing church in your area and grow in the house of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Were you blessed? It's time to give our tithes and offerings. I know the Bible says whenever it is chastisement comes, it's never palatable. He beat me first before he beat you. At least um, take that for solace. As we give our tithes and offerings today, the methods of giving, the platforms available to you will be shown on the screen. So please avail yourself of those platforms to give electronically. If you're in-house and you need to give manually, please lift up your hands and the ushers will pass you an envelope so you can give via check or cash. As you do so today, uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. True worship. Thank you.
us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for today. Father, we thank you first for your word that you have spoken unto us. Indeed, Father, we repent. Father, we thank you because we know your word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, your word has been spoken and we have listened. Father, we pray for grace, the grace that we need to go into the world and to minister your word and to compel them to come. Father, grant it unto us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word that has come forth. Father, we pray, let it grow in our heart. Let it continue to move us forward. In everything we do, Father, we pray that we will always remember today that you have spoken. And your word, let it continue to be powerful in our lives. We thank you for the giving of your children. Father, we have brought our tithes and our offerings before you. Father, we pray this morning, let it be acceptable in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you are the one that has granted us even this wisdom to obtain. And Father, so we have brought the 10% that you said for us to bring. Father, we pray, let it be acceptable today in Jesus' name. We pray for those that wanted to give but did not have. Father, we pray that you will enrich them also in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those that will minister this fund. Father, we pray for wisdom. Father, we just pray for instruction how to administer this fund. Father, you grant it unto them in Jesus' name. Father, once again, we just want to appreciate you for all that you continue to do in our lives. We give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let us have our seats. We have come to a session during the service that we welcome those that are worshiping with us for the first time. If you are one of those in-house, we will appreciate and we want you to stand up so that we can recognize you. So if this is your very first time in Jesus' house, we want you to stand up so that we can welcome, welcome. Those that are around them, please give them a warm welcome. Let us welcome so they will come back. Let's express our love for them. Come on, let's, let's welcome them. Let's welcome them. Let's make them feel welcome. We thank you for coming. We want you to please remain standing. Please remain standing just for a few minutes. We want to welcome you. This is Jesus House Baltimore. In this house, as you heard this morning, the word of God will come undiluted to encourage you so that you can maximize your God-given potential. In this house, the word of God is taught. And our pastor, our senior pastors, Pastor Tola and Pastor Kofo, even though they're not here today, they're glad that you're here and they just want to express to you that you are welcome. Just as we are expressing to you, we welcome you. We know you have many options, but we believe that the Holy Spirit directed you into this house. And yes, this may be your first time, but we want you to know the next time you come into this house, you are part of this family. And once again, we welcome you. Very soon, somebody is going to ask you to get up and get, collect your belongings. We have a gift for you in the lobby. They're going to tell you more about this church that you're visiting for the first time. So for now, you can have your seat. Come on, let's appreciate them. Let's app and also, for those that are watching online, if this is your very first time, once again, we welcome you as well. There is a QR code showing on, the, on your TV and on your set. We want you to scan that QR code so that someone can reach out to you so that we can tell you more about this church and give you whatever information that you are looking for. And so, very soon, we will invite you also to come into the house and to just fellowship with us. Once again, let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've had a very powerful word today. Um, just a few announcements before we bring the service to a close. Um, the Revolve Ministry is having a, what they call an AI and chat GPT workshop. We all know that AI is all around us, right? Artificial intelligence. So they are putting together a workshop on October 7th. Registration is open in the Church Center app. So please go ahead and sign up. Also, the Fashion Design Affinity Group is inviting all ladies 
for a makeup and head tie skills session immediately after this service. They're meeting in the faith room in the Glory Center. So that's a great opportunity. You don't want to miss out on this. Also, all men are reminded to please stay behind after this service. All right. I would now ask for our first-time guests to please rise, and now you may exit the sanctuary and receive the gifts that have been made available for you. If you stood up earlier, God bless you. Thank you again for visiting us. We look forward to seeing you again next time. God bless you. All right, and for the rest of the of the for the rest of us, can we rise as we bring the service to a close? The word of God this afternoon has challenged me, and I'm very sure it has challenged all of us to go out and not just look out for ourselves, but we've been admonished to yield and let the spirit of God prevail. So I want to also challenge us by the grace of God that as we step out into the week, as we step out into our jobs, our businesses, whatever it is that we're doing this week, that we would step aside and let someone know about this God that we serve. May the love of God be made known to someone today in the name of Jesus. And so, Father Lord, we ask, oh God, that as we step out, oh God, we ask, oh God, that you be with us, you protect us, almighty Father. We pray, almighty God, that next week we will have full course to come back and to give praise and honor to your holy name again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a wonderful week.